Psalms 84, 1 through 86, 17. Devotional Focus Verse In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Psalm 86, 7. I have always been a person who likes to seek out advice. Every Saturday morning, I tune in to a local talk radio station and pick up tips from the garden doctor. Mr. Fix-It is another of my favorites. When our children were very young, I would ask other mothers for advice on potty training, when to start allowances, how to train first graders to pick up after themselves, and so on. As my children grew older, I was thankful for a friend who would lend an ear whenever I was concerned about their choice of friends or grades at school. There was always someone I could turn to when I needed counsel or consolation. That probably reinforced my tendency to assume that if I talked to the right person and asked the right questions, I could find a solution to whatever I faced. Then one day, my father called to say that my mother had been diagnosed with an incurable type of cancer. The only thing that could be done was treatment to slow its spread. As soon as I hung up the phone, I fell apart emotionally. I needed help. My mom needed help. Who could I call? My mind raced through a list of friends and acquaintances, but part of me realized that there was no advice that could make this situation better. There was no one who could provide a solution to the challenge facing us. Then, from the depths of my soul, I cried out to God, Lord, only you can help. Only you understand. I will never forget the wave of peace and the assurance of God's love that came over me. All I needed was Him. I knew He would be with us through whatever lay ahead. That experience taught me the profound truth stated in our focus verse. God will answer us when we call upon Him in the time of trouble. No doubt, at some point in life, each one of us will face a situation that seems hopeless and for which any human remedy is beyond reach. However, God is more than just a friend who will listen and offer some advice. He is a friend who will take the burden from our hearts and give us peace and comfort. If what you face today is a rough and stormy ride, you can do what the psalmist did and acknowledge the greatness of God. The assurance that God answers prayer and will sustain you is an invaluable consolation and source of strength. Background Information Psalm 84 Psalm 84 was written for the sons of Korah, who were singers and keepers of the temple gates. It is an eloquent expression of love and appreciation for God's sanctuary. While no author is cited, in all probability it was written by David. The Syriac version of the Psalms points to his authorship. Psalm 84 is typically associated with the Feast of Tabernacles, an autumn celebration of gratitude for God's provision. It may have been a song that conveyed the pilgrims' rejoicing as they traveled to the temple in Jerusalem. In verse 1, the plural form of tabernacles indicates the psalmist's love for all areas of the temple, referred to as courts, in verse 2. In verses 3 and 4, He conveyed envy for the birds that freely nested in the vicinity of the temple, while he was only rarely privileged to visit the place where God's glory dwelt. The word baka in verse 6 means weeping, inferring that the valley of weeping would become a place of refreshing wells and pools of blessings as the pilgrims renewed their strength there during their journey to appear before God in the temple. The joys of attendance in God's house are only surpassed by the joy of His presence with those who walk uprightly, a phrase which means literally, in perfectness or whole, entire, in integrity. See verse 11. Psalm 85 Psalm 85, like the preceding psalm, is dedicated to the sons of Korah. Its theme is praise for Israel's deliverance from captivity and includes a prayer for Israel to turn their hearts back to God. 
Although the only specific allusion to historical events is the reference to captivity in verse 1, it indicates a time of nationwide humiliation. Many believe the psalm was written after the captives returned from Babylonian captivity. Others suggest it could have been related to any national calamity in Israel's history. Still others interpret these verses from a prophetical viewpoint, proposing they refer to Israel's future restoration and the establishment of Christ's millennial reign. Psalm 86 The psalmist's prayer in Psalm 86 petitions God to grant mercy and help and is intermingled with adoration and thanksgiving for God's wondrous works. This is the only psalm in Book 3 directly ascribed to David. His prayer is comprised of four sections which are divided by avowals of God's greatness, verses 5, 10, 15, and 17. No historical setting is clear. Many scholars consider this psalm to be a mosaic work compiled from Psalms 25 through 28 and 54 through 57, and the books of Exodus, Deuteronomy, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. In verses 1 through 5, the psalmist pleaded with God to heed his prayer because he was oppressed and desperately needed God's intervention. The Hebrew meaning for the word holy in verse 2 is pious, true, or godly, all of which indicate that the psalmist believed his righteous living should be a reason for God to protect him. The phrase, rejoice the soul, verse 4, was a petition for God to fill his soul with joy. Unite my heart to fear thy name, in verse 11, was a supplication for God to give the psalmist a heart that was single-minded in praising and glorifying his name forever. David concluded his psalm in verses 16 and 17 with a series of requests entreating God to give him strength to triumph. He pointed out that his deliverance would confound his enemies and validate Jehovah's greatness and power over all the earth. Conclusion Challenging situations may come our way that cause us to feel weak and helpless. However, like David, we can call out to God to sustain and deliver us in such times. Psalm 84 How amiable are thy tabernacles! O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King, and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be still praising thee. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer, give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold, O God our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield, the Lord will give grace and glory, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Psalm 85 Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land, thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath, thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us for ever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people, and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other.
truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Psalm 86. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy, O thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good, and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great, and doest wondrous things, thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth, unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name for evermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion, and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me, and have mercy upon me, give thy strength unto thy servant, and save the son of thine handmaid. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it, and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, hast helped me, and comforted me.